Hello and welcome to yet another half term revision video. Now, within today's lesson, we're going to be looking at unseen poetry and I'll be showing you how to write two model responses to the 2021 unseen poetry question. Okay, so this is the unseen poetry question as it appeared in the 2021 AQA exam. Now, remember, I'm mentioning two model answers because you will always have two questions to answer when it comes to unseen poetry. You're going to have 50 minutes and all to do this. And in terms of time allocation, in addition to the first 10 minutes, which you should spend reading through both poems, then planning your responses for both questions, you should spend roughly around 25 minutes for the 24 marker, okay? So the 24 marker is the first question based on just the first lead poem. Then spend around 50 minutes for the eight marker, okay? So this is the second question where you've got a second poem and then you've got to write two comparative paragraphs for that eight mark question. So let's get started on answering the 2021 Unseen Poetry exam. So bear in mind for the Unseen Poetry portion of your exam, you're going to have 50 minutes to answer the full exam. And let's have a look at the 24 mark question, which you should allocate roughly around 25 minutes to, as well as the eight mark question, the second comparative question, which you should allocate roughly around 15 minutes for, okay? So aim to write about four paragraphs of the 24 marker, and then two paragraphs for the eight marker. The remaining 10 minutes should be spent, of course, reading through the questions, reading through as well the poems. So always begin by firstly getting a lay of the land and reading through both questions and knowing what you're gonna look for within both poems, okay? So the first question, which is the 24 marker, asks, in a London thoroughfare at 2 a.m., how does the poet present the speaker's feelings about the city at night, okay? So of course, we have a clue in the title that this is probably gonna be a poem about London, okay? And we're told that the speaker seems to have certain feelings towards this city at night, okay? Now, let's have a look at the question that comes up for the comparative poem. So we're told that in both November nights, of course, it's the second poem, Edinburgh, and a London thoroughfare 2 a.m., the speakers describe attitudes towards the city at night. Okay, so there's a theme between both of them. They are describing the writer's or the poet's perspectives towards the city at night. What are the similarities and or differences between the methods the poets use to present these attitudes? Remember, th methods relates to language and structure techniques, things like alliteration, metaphor, simile, sibilance, repetition, listing, and so on. You need to include techniques for both the 24 marker and the eight marker. So now with that in mind, let's have a read through the first poem, London Thoroughfare. They have watered the street. It shines in the glare of lamps, cold white lamps and lies like a slow moving re river barred with silver and black. Cabs go down it, one, then another. Between them, I hear the shuffling of feet. Tramps doze on the window ledges. Night walkers pass along the sidewalks. The city is squalid and sinister, with a silver barred street in the mist, slow moving, a river leading nowhere. So this first verse is really interesting in the sense that London, okay, so of course we know that this is the city that's been depicted, is being depicted as quite cold, a little bit dark, dismal, and gloomy, okay? So even if it's shining in the glare of these lamps, the lamps seem to be glaring. Also, the lamps seem cold. Usually we think we associate light with warmth, but in this case, we can see that these lamps, and of course we've got repetition here, these lamps seem quite gloomy, okay? So you've got repetition here. And of course, as you're reading, make sure you're picking out these techniques. And we can see that, you know, London is filled with artificial light, but it seems kind of harsh, ugly, and unforgiving. Also, we're told that tramps, which is a, a politically incorrect way of referring to homeless people, we're told that, you know, tramps doze on the window ledges, so they're sleeping. So there's plenty of homeless people from what we can see here or from the speaker's perspective. And also night walkers, people walking at night, pass along the sidewalks, right? So people seem quite isolated and lonely from this first verse, okay? We can see that the different characters who are walking through London streets seem quite alone, a little bit alienated. And the city is depicted as quite squalid and sinister. So here we've got these characters that are mentioned, people who are around the city who seem quite alone. But then also the use of sibilance here, which is a language technique, illustrates that London seems quite unwelcoming, okay? And of course, the River Thames seems to be like a river that's leading nowhere. So let's look at the second verse. Opposite my window, 
The moon cuts clear and round through the plum coloured night. She cannot light the city, it is too bright. It has white lamps and glitters coldly. So here there's a really interesting juxtaposition between nature, the moon that's cutting clear and round. Okay, so here the moon is quite beautiful. Nature seems to be very, very beautiful in contrast to this light that's coming from artificial lamps. Okay, so this is nature. And it's quite clear, so this is a really interesting adjective, okay? And of course, we then learn that even if it's trying to light up this city, she cannot light the city, okay? And here the moon is personified, it's given a female uh, pronoun. And it's personified as being unable to brighten up the city. And once more, what we can see here is that the moon, even if nature is trying to cut through London, it seems quite distant from uh, uh, the natural landscape that it's set within, okay? So London still seems to be depicted in a really, really negative way. Let's look at the final verse. I stand in the window and watch the moon. So the speaker is now injecting themselves and telling us directly what they are doing. She is thin and lusterless, but I love her. I know the moon and this is an alien city. So here we can see the moon, which is juxtaposed to this alien city. And we can have assonance being shown, uh, being used to emphasize this. So assonance of A. And we can see here that there's this um, repetition as well of uh, not even repetition. There's alliteration of window and watch. And the sense of this window, the window is creating a barrier. There's a barrier. There's something that, um, seems very unwelcoming and also um, very alienating about the speaker and the city. They seem to be kind of separate and distant from London. And of course, what we can see here is their feelings towards the city at night are actually quite negative, okay? So it seems um, like they are very unimpressed with the city at night, okay? So I would, uh, in terms of approaching this 24 marker, I'd work through it chronologically and pick out four separate points from the beginning, two from the middle, and then something from the end, as you can see here. So before I move on to reading this poem, I'm first gonna address and tackle this 24 marker, and I'm gonna show you how you can write a really solid grade nine response using these four points for the 24 mark portion of the Unseen Poetry question, okay? So let's go for it. So let's have a look at the first paragraph. Remember, all the paragraphs that I write, I take the simplified peel paragraph format. So starting off with a point, evidence, explanation, and link. And within my explanation, this is where the bulk of your marks are, okay? That's where the analysis is. That's where you can even do zooming in and really focusing in on one word to do some word level analysis. So let's have a look at how uh, I structured my first peel paragraph for this 24 marker. Here's my point. Firstly, it's clear the speaker feels that London is a dismal and gloomy city at night. Even if it is illuminated with lights, the artificial lights seem cold and unnatural. That's my opening point. As you can see here, I've emphasized and I've developed my point. So even if the pure paragraph structure seems simple, you can actually layer in lots of points within each step, okay? I've done that with two sent uh, sentences within my opening point. So let's have a look at my evidence. The speaker notices the city evidence shines in the glares of lamps cold white lamps. That's my evidence. I have embedded it. Now here's my analysis. This is where I'm going to add my structure observation to so the use of repetition, but I'm also going to zoom in and do some word level analysis. Lowell, which is the author's surname, so the poet's surname, uses repetition of the noun lamps to convey how forbidding and gloomy London seems. Now here's my zooming in. The adjective cold emphasizes that even if the city is illuminated, it still seems dull. That's my explanation. I've done some word level analysis on top. Now this is a link back to the question and the keywords within the question. Thus, it is evident the speaker sees London as dull and dismal at night. So that's my first point in relation to this. However, I'm not done because this is of course a 24 mark question. I need to develop my points. So I'm now going to move on to my second peel paragraph.
So let's have a look at the second peel paragraph. This is in relation to tramps, night walkers, and the idea that the city is squalid and sinister. So here's my opening point. Furthermore, the speaker notices that the city at night seems filled with isolated and alienated characters. So people who are totally alone. Everyone seems to be alone in the city at night. That's my opening points. And let's have a look at the evidence. The speaker watches the tramps who doze. So this is my first two bits of evidence, as well as the night walkers in the squalid and sinister city. Okay, so I've embedded my evidence within what I am writing in the first E within my pill paragraph. Let's have a look at the second E. This is the explanation. The poet uses sibilance to emphasize how unwelcoming the city seems at night. In fact, it is both uninspiring and frightening. So here I'm talking using, uh, I'm emphasizing how this language technique really presents the city at night. The noun tramps, and I'm zooming in, focuses our attention on the weakest members of the society and they seem forgotten. That's my explanation. Now let's have a look at the link. Consequently, the city at night is depicted as alienating and incredibly lonely. So of course, it's not very flattering image of London at night according to this poem. So now I'm going to move on to my third point relating to the juxtaposition between the city, which seems really horrible, squalid, whatever, but in contrast to nature, which is trying to illuminate it, but she can't light the city. So I'm going to move on to my third paragraph. Here's my third peel paragraph in relation to how the moon is portrayed in contrast to the city. Moreover, the city at night seems unwelcoming even to nature. The moon is portrayed as attempting to heal the city at night, yet it cannot illuminate it, hence London seems to eclipse nature at night. That's my opening point. We learned that the moon is clear, two bits of evidence so far, yet she cannot light the city. I've embedded my evidence. The poet's use of personification uh, language portrays the moon as a healing woman who simply wants to nurture the city. Now I'm going to zoom in. Yet the verb light emphasizes how desolate London is. Nature cannot redeem it at night, okay, because she's trying to light up the city. As a result, now this is my link, the city at night seems to be beyond redemption. It can't even be saved even by nature. So now I'm going to move to my fourth and final pill paragraph relating to how the speaker is by the window watching what's going on and they just still find the city just horrible, lonely and non-welcoming in contrast to obviously nature, which seems quite welcoming. So here's my final peel paragraph. Finally, the speaker seems completely distant and detached from the city at night as they survey it, they're looking at it. Whilst the natural world feels familiar, the city feels like a strange place to her. That's my opening point, okay, within this paragraph. Here's my evidence. They stand in the window and watch even if they know the moon they believe this is an alien city okay so i've embedded the uh, phrases stand in the window and watch know the moon as well as they believe this is an alien city okay so that's my evidence they stand in the window and watch even if they know the moon they believe this is an alien city so here's my explanation Lowell uses alliteration coupled with assonance to convey how the moon is the only beautiful feature of the city at night here's me zooming in Nonetheless, the adjective alien reveals that the city has very few positive qualities as even nature cannot rescue it. That's my explanation. So now I'll link it back to the question. Hence, it is clear the speaker detests the city at night. She hates it. It seems alien and unnatural to her. And that's how to write a full model response and a full mark answer, to be honest, to the 24 mark response. Make sure you have some structure and language points. So now that we're done with the 24 marker, let's turn our attention to how to answer and how to approach the eight mark question. So of course, for this eight mark question, you are going to be given a second poem and you've got to compare it to the first poem. So of course, let's read through this second poem. Of course, we can see here, this is a different city, Edinburgh. So let's have a look. The night tinkles like ice and glasses. So the night is making a little bit of noise. Leaves are glued to the pavement with frost. The brown air fumes at the shop windows, tries the doors and slidles, sidles past. So now there's, um, you know, a bit of um, dark brown air that's uh, crossing across the city. 
a gulp down winter raw. So each, this person is drinking winter. The heady darkness swirls with tenements. In a brown fuzz of cotton wool, lamps fade up, crags die into pits. Okay, so here there's light that's kind of becoming a bit dim within this city. Frost is quite cold. It's a freezing day in this city. In my lungs is as harsh as leaves. Interesting simile. Scraped up on parts. I look up there. A high roof sails at the masthead, fluttering a grey and ragged star. The world's a bear shrugged in his den. So now here, they first begin the first three verses by describing this city at night. It's kind of this mix of uh, snow and brownness. Okay, so kind of a little bit of uh, pollution, but the city seems to be kind of covered in this um, layer of snow everywhere and everything is quite cold. And here, of course, this really powerful metaphor is showing that everyone is really, really cold and they're hiding away. So the world's, the world's a bear shrugged in his den. It's snug and close in the snoring night. And outside, like chrysanthemums, flowers, the fog unfolds its bitter scent. So here we can see the city at night, even if it's a little bit polluted, it seems like nature has really overtaken everything, okay? So um, the, the speaker also equally seems to be quite overwhelmed a little bit by the cold, okay? So when I'm addressing and looking at this question, what would I look for? Of course, I need to make sure that I'm comparing it to the first uh, poem and you can either talk about similarities and or differences. I'm gonna go for both. Now, the first uh, interesting difference I would say is here we can see that nature seems to kind of overpower everything. Even this opening simile shows that the snow has covered everything within this city. And of course, what this is illustrating is maybe the speaker seems to kind of um, be kind of overcome and overwhelmed with this weather, especially at night. This is in contrast to how nature is really powerless here. The moon is thin and lusterless, okay? So of course, the moon is sad, it's thin. This is personification again. So the key difference I'll probably focus on is whilst nature overpowers Edinburgh, in this instance, it's uh, London that seems to overpower the moon and nature. However, what is the similarity that sh uh, I can see in both? We can see in both poems that the speakers actually seem really overwhelmed, okay? Firstly, in this poem, we can see a sense of overwhelm within the speaker, um, you know, the, the perhaps overwhelmed by the city itself, okay? So they um, notice, you know, the city is filled with this river leading nowhere. This is hyperbole. So the speaker seems to be quite overwhelmed by their feeling of alienation. However, here, the similarity is that the speaker also seems to be quite overwhelmed. However, in this instance, them drinking winter down raw, okay? And here there's caesura. They seem to be overwhelmed by the cold in this city. That would be the key uh, similarity I'd point out, okay? So of course, I'm still gonna answer this question, I'm going to write two peel paragraphs, but it's going to be comparative peel paragraphs. So my opening point, I'm going to compare poem A and B. In my evidence, I'm now going to pick evidence from poem A and B. And then in my explanation, I'm going to talk about techniques from poems A and B. And of course, link it back to the question with poem A and B and what this shows about the speaker's attitudes towards the city at night. So of course, I'm now going to move on to question number two in this part of the unseen poetry question and write two comparative full paragraphs with this eight marker. So starting with the first paragraph. So here's the first comparative paragraph. Here's my opening point, including both poems. To begin with, it is evident that both poems have significant differences in the speaker's attitudes towards the cities at night. So here, it's evident that I'm gonna talk about differences. Lowell, the surname of the first poet, portrays a city that has eclipsed nature, yet McCaig, second poet, their surname, describes how nature has overpowered Edinburgh at night. That's my opening point, talking about both poems, making consistent comparisons. Here's my evidence for both poems. The moon in London, I've just used the main word London and use ellipsis around it, is thin and lusterless, yet the night tinkles like ice, second bit of evidence, in the second poem. That's my evidence for both. Lavelle's use of personifications 
uh, this is a language technique, conveys the speaker's disgust at how London has overpowered the moon in the first poem. Okay, so this is the first uh, technique and explanation for poem number one. However, McCaig's use of simile in the second poem shows how impressed the speaker is with nature, which has consumed and covered the city. That's my explanation talking about both poems. Now I'm linking it back again once more, making sure that I'm including both poems because I'm consistently comparing. Thus, whilst the speaker feels irritated by how nature is eclipsed at night in the first poem, the narrator in the second poem seems in awe of how the snow has covered the city at night. That is my link talking about both. So now I'm just simply gonna finish off with my second pill paragraph and that's it. I'm done with Unseen Poetry. Here is the second Peel paragraph, including both poems. On the other hand, it's clear that both speakers seem somewhat overwhelmed in their respective cities at night, okay? So in London, as well as Edinburgh. The speaker in Lowell's poem is overwhelmed by a feeling of loneliness, yet the narrator McKeague's poem is overwhelmed by the city's cold, wintry conditions. That's my opening point for both. Here's my evidence. The first speaker notes that London, it has a river leading nowhere. Nonetheless, the second speaker gulps down winter raw. That's my evidence. Here's my explanation. Lavelle's use of hyperbole depicts how overwhelmed the speaker is by London, as even the river appears despondent and dreary. Despondent means sad. Yet McCaig's use of caesura conveys how overwhelmed the speaker is by the harsh winter in Edinburgh's rugged landscape. That's my explanation. Here's now the link, including both poems. Consequently, both speakers seem overwhelmed in the city at night. The first speaker is overwhelmed with sentiments of isolation, yet the second speaker is overcome with how crisp and cold the city is. That's the link for both poems. And so that really sums up how to approach and how to write model answers and model responses for both parts of the Unseen Poetry exam. And this is for the 2021 exam paper specifically. Thanks so much for listening.